Hi, welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Fossack. I'm the lead engineer at IT Pro TV. With me today is Cody, one of the engineers on my team. Thanks for joining me today, Cody. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited to talk about our topic today. Uh, yeah, what topic is that? What are we going to be talking about today? Uh, we came across the eventful GHC blog post and hope to dig into that. Sounds good to me. Let's jump right in. So, what is this blog post about, Cody? Um, it's about the event log and uh, how you can use it to get a picture of what GHC is doing, uh, not only by the events it already throws, but adding your own user-defined events to uh, get a complete picture of the things that you do care about in terms of time and space. Sounds cool. Um, I think I could probably guess based on context clues, but what exactly is the event log? Uh, it is just a generic list of events uh, written to a file inside of the binary. All right, so that sounds like a pretty lightweight file format. Um, the way that I'm most used to looking at the performance of Haskell programs is using profiling. How does the event log compare with profiling? Uh, so a big advantage it has, uh, they, they mention it in a different order in the blog post, but I think the last thing mentioned is the biggest reason to use it, uh, it has a lot less impact on performance and you can keep all your same optimizations you'd be running anyway. That sounds and nice. Get an eye on those. Yeah, because I know that with profiling, you have to rebuild basically everything, right? Yeah, and it can it can really take <laughs> quite a bit. And then, then you have something that you're uncomfortable about putting in production. Right, because... We use Haskell here at IT Pro TV, and if you try to rebuild our project with profiling, I think you're probably going to want to go get a coffee, maybe even go get lunch while that happens, because it's got to build, you know, 200 some odd dependencies and rebuild the whole project. Um, it's a lot of work for the compiler to do. Yeah, last time I did it, it took at least a good 30 minutes. <laughs> and uh, and then once you've got that built, like you said, uh, I'm not super comfortable throwing that in production because profiling defeats so many of the optimizations that we kind of rely on to have a fast service. Right. And if you're defeating those optimizations, that means you're getting a fuzzier picture of what the performance was like anyway. So in that way, uh, the event log here lets us have a lot more clear look at that and take more clear actions as a result. Right. And to, to put a fine point on that, when you enable profiling, you can change the behavior in terms of performance of the thing that you're looking at. So you may identify some part of your program that's slow and turn on profiling to figure out why it's slow. And then once you do that, some other part of your program turns out to be the hotspot with profiling enabled. So the event log seems like a good way to avoid that problem, but still get a peek into the performance characteristics. Right. And if you do go ahead and need uh, more information from profiling, you can keep in mind what you learned from the event log and and, and have at least an idea of things that maybe are just noise in right. the profile. Yeah, it's uh, you know by no means one or the other. You can definitely use both. Um, so with the event log, uh, I think GHC has some custom tooling around making events, but there's some stuff in debug.trace, which is a handy little module that uh, provides a lot of stuff for like logging out from pure functions. That's the way that I most commonly use it but it seems like it's recently gotten some other stuff uh, for logging events. Could you talk about that? Yeah, they recently added uh, the with trace IO function and I, I believe a couple others. Mm -hmm. They, uh, oh, sorry, it was trace event and trace event IO, trace marker and trace marker IO. Right. Uh, that lets you have user defined markers and that is, that's really powerful. That lets you see, you know, when that spike and heap usage happens, uh, mm -hmm. what marker is it near? What logical thing you defined as happening is going on? Right. So we've been talking a lot about events, which are you know just kind of ad hoc. Something happened, but a marker it sounds like is a bigger picture than that. Right. This is amongst all those events that are happening. Uh, what what function just happened? Or not even what function, but at a higher level, what unit of work is happening. Right. So like right now we're in the, um, you know, 
collecting dependencies part of the job and then now we're on the optimizing part and now we're on the linking part those are those might be markers exactly cool so debug.trace has these functions that anybody can use but ghc itself uses these in kind of a neat little way uh, could you talk about that a little bit cody yeah sure they uh have a function they use called with timing now um and they they create their own user defined events of uh, sys tool linker uh, cmm pipeline chasing dependencies stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be recording these by sampling all of hackage which is amazing yeah that's uh, that's a huge data set to work with you know, obviously not every Haskell program is on Hackage, but a huge subset of them are. And it seems like a good way to get a peek at the performance characteristics of GHC in the real world. Right. And something so exciting to me is I'm thinking that is a representative sample. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, I think it's kind of in stark contrast to in this blog post, they give a little Hello World program as an example, and they uh, show the event log for that. Um, and that's the type of thing that I'm more used to seeing in like my own personal benchmarks or whatever's in GHC. It's a, a little program that's meant to show either a typical use case or like some weird corner case, but not representative of programs at large. Right, and it does have their place, uh, but this is gonna give, you know, there's more complicated uh, behaviors and gives a chance to get insights on those. Right, which is super exciting. Um, and one of the ways that uh, we can look at the results of this data set is using a tool they mentioned called GHC Events Analyze, which reads that binary event log and spits out a human readable kind of table of information along with an SVG chart so you can visualize where things are spending its time. Um, and I think they mentioned a couple other tools. Uh, could you talk about some of those? Yeah, one of the other ones was event log to HTML, which is like an interactive look at your heap. It also, uh, when you add those markers in, mm -hmm. uh, it will it will tell you what if it, what units of work happened near a, a particular place in the graph you're looking at, like a spike or something or a drop. That sounds super useful. So you could use GHC events analyze to look at timing information. Where are we spending our time? And then look at event log to HTML right. to say, are we, uh, you know, doing too much garbage collection there? Are we allocating too much? Or is it probably CPU bound instead? Or maybe something else, you know, maybe it's IO bound. Right. And uh, we don't want to leave out ThreadScope, which will be the, uh, the non-web app. It's a GTK app. Okay. Um, I believe it offers some of the same features. Uh, if your memory serves correctly, maybe a couple more. Nice. So we've got a lot of tools to look at these event logs. And one of the things that um, I really like about these event logs is it sort of separates when you're running the program versus when you're analyzing it. So the way that I'm most used to using Haskell is with web apps. So typically you want to analyze it while it's running, but lots of tools like the GHC compiler itself or a lot of other programs, you know, you run them once and then they're done. And you can look at this event log to see over the course of running it, where did it spend its time? Right which can be super useful for like a command line tool that, you know, if you wanted to write a grep competitor in Haskell, you could do that and run it over some data set and then look at the event log and spend some time poking around with that. So for GHC, um, they've kind of built this into, like you said earlier, their with timings function to give a picture of where time is spent. They don't quite have everywhere figured out yet. They're still missing a few spots, right? Yeah, they were missing uh, things like when it's parsing information at startup, as well as at the end after code generation. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to add those in too so we can uh, get that full picture, make sure we're not missing a hotspot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be really nice to have that picture complete end to end, you know, from when GHC starts to when it's done and everything in between. Agreed. Um, and looking at this, you know, kind of sample output they have of building a Hello World program, it was shocking to me, maybe not shocking, but uh, they they sort where it spends all of its time. And the number one thing is the linker, because obviously Hello World isn't executable, so you want to run it. So it's got to be linked. And of its like three and a half seconds of total runtime, two and a half seconds are spent in the linker. That's crazy. 
It really is. Uh, and, you know, after this, I, I remember reading some old stack overflows about the gold linker being faster. Uh, I think you've mentioned LLD before. Mm -hmm. I, I want to specify those manually and benchmark these. Yeah. Because that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, because if we can save, you know, 80% of our time on the linking step, that's huge. And I know that here at IT Pro, we actually changed how we build our executables. We used to, we have many services. So we used to have an executable for each service. And we would spend a huge amount of our build time just linking all of those uh, executables. So we actually changed it to where we only have one executable and it has a bunch of like quote unquote sub executables. So we only spend that linking or we only pay for that linking thing once. And uh, then we get all of the executables we want out of it. So a little hack that hopefully wouldn't be necessary if we could switch to something like the gold linker. Right. And uh, then there's there's some things I've heard uh, happening like uh, Basil and uh, adding more advanced Haskell support for that. So hopefully we can make some headway in that space. Yeah, it would be a huge gain for, for everybody that builds executables, which I think is most people working with Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you mentioned earlier that uh, one of the things you could do with this timing information is build all of Hackage and get an accurate assessment for some real world code. Um, and they talk about doing that in here with head.hackage, which is a, I guess, subset or snapshot of Hackage that is built with the current head version, like what's currently on master for GHC. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be really cool for identifying you know, oh, we made this change that we thought was going to be improvement, but it didn't actually speed things up in Hackage, stuff like that. Um, is right. there anything else we could do with that information? Yeah, we can also uh, track that performance over time and uh, get a fine-grained picture at where regressions are happening. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, which could be really useful for people working on GHC to say, oh, this commit slowed things down unintentionally, or this performance improvement wasn't, wasn't as big as we thought. But also for people like me who don't hack on GHC all that often, we could look at, you know, the big question of is GHC 810 faster than 88 or, you know, other big uh, markers like that. Right. Maybe I, maybe I want to skip out on 810 because it doubles my compile time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hopefully that's not true. We don't have any data to back that up right now. <laughs> yes, luckily. <laughs> um but yeah, you know, that's uh, a common thing that pops up, you know, with these new versions of GHC that are adding a bunch of extensions and features and fixing a bunch of bugs and stuff. Are they slowing things down or getting faster? We don't really know right now. Right. Um, another thing you talked about earlier was profiling our own code. So we've been talking about GHC and obviously that's for the kind of build step of our pipeline. But if we're building stuff and then running it in production, we're interested in how fast that stuff is running and which parts are the hotspots there. So could you talk a little about using these events to profile your own code? Right. So something we recently had an issue with is a producer consumer app uh, that runs across many threads mm -hmm. we call Jeffrey. <laughs> um, and we were looking at its performance something that you can do with the event log is to tag each thread ID. You can look at things like, is the heap usage per thread even? You can get an insight on if you need to do things like apply back pressure or if, uh, you know, your, your consumers are getting starved. Yeah. All super useful information and hard to gather through other means like profiling. So the event log is a great way to get some insight into your running code like that. 100%. All right. Well, I think that about covers this eventful GHC blog post. Any closing thoughts, Cody? Um, no, start using an event log. Watch GHC. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great project, that GHC. Yep. Thank you to the developers. Even though we talk about slow compile times, we appreciate all the work. We know it's a, a struggle. Oh, yeah. It's hard. I would not want to write my own GHC. Seems very challenging to do. So, yes, thank you to the GHC devs. And thank you, Cody, for joining me today. It's been great talking with you. Great talking with you, too, Taylor. Thank you. And as always, thank you for listening to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes if you liked what you heard. If you didn't like what you hear, uh, I don't know, hit us up on Twitter and we'll try to do better. Thanks again, and we'll...